Hello and welcome to Community Storytelling Season 3. Thank you, Linda Lester, for all three of our seasons so far. Make sure you go by Lester Square now and then. I'm Lisa Chrysler and I am so excited. Well, I'm excited every time I do this show. I love being here at KCAT TV 15. I, I found out that there was life after radio and I didn't just have a face for radio. So this has been tremendous. And the people I get to meet, and I've got to tell you, somebody I've always wanted to meet is sitting right next to me, but I think she's probably your friend already, but she's about to become mine, Nanette Kincaid. Hi, Nanette. Hello. I'm not kidding. Finally, nice to meet you. I am not kidding. I've <laughs> always wanted to meet you. I've yeah. heard so much about you, and of course, your late husband, Thomas, and we'll talk a little bit about Thomas, too, but I want to talk about you and your four daughters and the magnificent things you have been doing with Kincaid finances, Kincaid money, just say it bluntly, Kincaid money. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. So after Thomas died, you set up the Kincaid Family Foundation. So how old is it now? Two years? Oh, yeah. um, Thomas passed about eight years ago. No. It, uh, believe me, I'm as shocked as you are. It does not seem like what that could I be even possible. What was I thinking when I said two years? I know. Eight yeah. years. Eight years, April 6th. All right, yeah. all right. So I did not realize that. Yes. So the foundation has been around for eight years? Yes. And why did you form it? Well, mainly to, basically the foundation has two arms. One is to promote and continue the legacy of Thomas Kincaid. Of course. He left behind a amazing collection of original oils, um, almost 2,000. And that, he, um, that had not been purchased. That had not been purchased. And where are the, maybe we shouldn't say where those 2,000 <laughs> oils are. <laughs> well, they, they are housed at his studio. In Morgan Hill? Uh, in, no, it, in uh, oh, Montesorino. The, okay, the live. family yeah. studio on, yes. uh, on the family compound. On the family, <laughs> yes. The studio, at the studio. Under um, lock and yes. key. Yeah, at a certain point, um, he decided that um, he wanted to keep the originals uh, with the vision to eventually start a museum. And so that is one of the long range goals that the foundation has is to be able to display the art. Right now it's stored very safely in a vault, um, which has been part of the tremendous project that the foundation has taken on is just um, to itemize and categorize and uh, we have an ongoing um, digital uh, recording of all of the, the pieces. And that was our first project, was just to get and everything. And we will get back to all those yeah. paintings. Yeah, so um, the, all those paintings. Yes, because that's a story yeah. in itself. Yes. And the yes. second arm of that's this foundation is humanitarian. And being five women, so myself and my four daughters. Um, and your daughter's names are? <laughs> one and ages. Oh, and I'll have to tell you the story behind that because it, it's, I think, very clever what we did. Um, so Merritt who is 31, uh -huh. and uh, all of the girls were named after famous male artists, and we have four daughters, but the names fit them perfectly. So and you were ready for the boy, them. each time you were ready for the boy. Well, we figured boy or girl, this name would be their name, and so Merritt is named after the artist William Merritt Chase, who painted in the early 1900s, and then Chandler is named after Howard Chandler Christie, and Windsor, Windsor McKay, and Everett, the baby who is 22, uh, John Everett Millay. And uh, it's just remarkable how these male names fit my beautiful daughters perfectly. And yes, they do. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, you, so you're going into the humanitarian field. Yes, and... Was that I, a love of Thomas's? Absolutely. Um, from day one, every one of his events, he had a component that was a charity component. And usually uh, that um, consisted of him doing a sketch, which we auctioned off, and all the money went to a local charity. And every year, because of all the events we were doing, it was 
anywhere between 750,000 to a million a year going back into the local communities that we had done the events in. I have emceed many an event yeah. where we were auctioning <laughs> off a Thomas <laughs> yeah, Kincaid exactly. painting. And uh, so that, that, that was just an ongoing thing, but we supported World Vision. One of the programs we did, we created a print that was sold through uh, World Vision to the World Vision supporters, and they increased their um, donors or the amount of children that were sponsored by 85,000 that year. So it was, for each person that purchased a print, it, the monies went to sponsor an additional child. What a fabulous tribute. And this is the type of thing. So 9-11, we also did a project which raised a uh, million dollars for the, I think it was, or maybe it was two million. Anyway, each, you know, one of these, um, Katrina, we mm -hmm. similar. We were able to utilize the the prints and do programs to be able to raise funds, and it was a win win because people enjoyed being able to collect a print, sure. but then the monies went yes to a yes. great cause. So you used so the we were funding for this fabulous project in San Jose. Tell us about it. It's okay. called the House of Light. Yes, um, your friend Scott Canale yeah. actually. Uh, nominated you for yes. this interview here at yes. KCAT TV and oh he, he says excuse me for bragging he sent me two pages <laughs> <laughs> Scott is delightful I, he is amazing and I think one of my biggest fans well <laughs> um, and deserve it yeah I well mean, he he um yes tell so, us thank tell you, us Scott, for, tell us yeah. about the house of light so it's a it's a wonderful story because it starts way back when my children were going to St. Andrews. We would do field trips to the Heritage House, which is a home in San Jose, um, operated uh, through City Team. Yes, Great and, City uh, Team Ministries. Yes, exactly. And um, Heritage Home is a shelter uh, for abused or homeless women. Um, many of them have drug and alcohol issues, and these are women who are expecting. So these are pregnant women who really are pretty much, you know, at the end of their yes. rope. Yes. And um, City Team provides them with, you know, shelter, all of the counseling, counseling resources, skills. Yes. You know, if they need their GED, their driver's license, they actually uh, set them up on a whole program to become a successful mom, to be able to yes. become employed and um, care for their child. And they have a fabulous track record. They, they have a really fabulous do. track. The women are extremely motivated mm -hmm. at that point in their life, and the combination is really terrific. Um, better success than, you know, you find in, in most any other program. So um, I uh, have a background in nursing. I am an RN, and my first few years of nursing, I worked in OB, and that was my passion. I wanted to be a midwife, but then thought, you know, well, this is probably safer being in a hospital than doing this uh, out of my own. And I've always had a passion for women, and the birth process and just that whole miracle of life. And um, so caring for women in that phase of life and helping them to care for their babies afterwards with breastfeeding and childcare. So always has been a passion. My grandmother was a midwife. And, really? And this is, you know, so sort of a generational thing. So when, um, when we started volunteering at Heritage Home, it just, you know, really touched my heart. So one of the, your previous interviewees, uh, Kathy Smith. Yes. She and I and a few other friends have been throwing an annual Christmas fundraising party. I think we're on our eighth year, something like that. And uh, every year we choose a different charity to benefit. Um, World Vision or Cancer Society, you know, different mm -hmm. each year. So last year, uh, I nominated the Heritage House to be our recipient. So um, while I was at the party, I was talking to some guests, 
and just sharing with them how my girls and I, through the foundation, had a dream of being able to provide another home like the Heritage Home to, you know, add to their program. And, um, and that, that got their ears open. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> especially the ears of one of my dear friends who also co-hosts the party uh, and is also a realtor. So the next week she comes to me and she says, Nanette, you won't believe this, but the perfect house has come on the market. And um, it was seven bedrooms, six bathrooms, perfect for a group home. It's an old Victorian on Hamilton and Lee. So, so Willow Glen. Terrific location. Had to have a big price tag. Well, affordable enough. Yeah. And uh, so I um, purchased the home and donated it to and City Team. It was renovated, remodeled. Well, and that is, to me, even the bigger part of the miracle of this whole project is I, through the foundation, was able to acquire this perfect home. The bones were perfect, but it was a very run-down, old Victorian, kind of put together with bubbled gum and band-aids, and the older couple that were living there had, you know, more or less jerry-rigged, you yes. know, the place to make it functional, but, you know, certainly not even, you know, nothing to code, or I wouldn't call it safe, necessarily. So, um, they're, they're it desperately needed s some serious remodeling. And through the community, there was such a rally. They were able to raise over 500000 more to be able to do a beautiful renovation. Fabulous. And uh, one of the women who, um, her husband's on the board at City Team, volunteered her time as a interior decorator fabulously okay. talented so she babysat the whole program or the whole process to um really coordinate all the colors and pick out so you it's know just beautiful. all the knobs and the cabinets and, and, and i hope there were a lot of thomas kincaid f pictures on the walls well that was our our last touch was um i donated uh, about 10 original nice. or not original the uh yes canvases and uh we hung those as kind of the, the finishing it's touch. It's called the House of Light. And yes, and uh, we named it the House of Light um, in honor of the girl's father and my late husband, Thomas Kincaid, the painter of light. Wonderful. And uh, we just felt very proud to be able to do that. And the women have moved in, correct? Yes. Um, women and children. Yes, and uh, there were, it, it's been a, a, over the last three months because as the women graduate, they, they are um, allowed to live at the Heritage Home for a year. The program is a, a year long. Once their year is up, they are eligible to then move into the House of Light. And uh, so as they've been graduating, we're filling up Wonderful. the house. Yeah. Wonderful. What a story. What a, what a yeah. fabulous story. And I know Thomas Kincaid would just be so proud. Absolutely. Money well spent. Yes. Money well spent. Absolutely. Well, I'm not done with you. <laughs> we're going to take a stroll to Leicester Square, and we're going to come back. I'm Lisa Chrysler. I'm enjoying my, my new best friend, Nanette Kincaid, and i got a couple more questions to ask her right after this on Community Storytelling here at KCAT TV 15. Hi, it's Lisa Chrysler. I'm at Leicester Square right here at the corner of Blossom Hill Road and Los Gatos Boulevard. A lot of fun things to do. Ken! Lisa, I didn't so even nice to see you. Finish my sentence. I'm so surprised to see you. What are you doing well, here? Well, we live close by and we're taking Rocky to the vet today. So do you have time for a cup of coffee at Phil's with me afterwards? Sure. Is it your treat or mine? It's definitely your treat. And Rocky's coming too. I, good with me. I am so glad to run into you at Leicester Square. It's one of my favorite places. It's one of my favorite places too. And we've been to Varenza and Super Duper and Phil's and we love going here. And so you know where I live, I have no flowers. So I come here to Leicester Square to enjoy all the flowers. They're gorgeous. So the motto here that Linda Lester coined is meet me at the square or meet us at the square or meet your besties at the square. I meet everybody at the square. It's Lester Square in Los Gatos. Come on by and cheers. Yes.
It's always great to go strolling at Leicester Square, maybe get a cup of coffee or a burger or something. Welcome back to Community Storytelling. I'm Lisa Chrysler, and I'm sitting with my new buddy, Nanette Kincaid, and she's probably already your buddy. Do people see you all over town all the time? Hey, Nanette, hey, Nanette. It really does feel like a small town. I can't go to, you know, on delays or if I'm run down to the Purple Onion, I'm, you know, bound to you know, bump into friends. Well, I'm a new resident here, so I hope I bump into you too now and oh, then. Oh, you will. Yes, well. yes. <laughs> so I like gotta, the local restaurant yes, too. Well, I'm, exactly. So was Thomas Kincaid? Did he ever go by Tom, or was he always Thomas Kincaid? He was Tom to us. Okay. Of course, his brush name Thomas Kincaid. If you're, you know, wanting to be official, um, but I always th you know, the funny thing was when when we first met. I thought it was really unusual because he spelled his name T-H-O-M because it was shortened for Thomas. Yes. That's kind of a, oh, so yeah. yes. So it was T -H -O -M. Tom, but not spelled yeah. just T-O-M. So I, and clever. I've read how you met. You have got to share this story. Oh it is, I don't know if a lot <laughs> of people know this. I mean, it is the uh, best. And it tickles me to even recall it every time I've told it a hundred times. Well, now that I've met you, I can even visualize it, which maybe isn't a good thing. <laughs> oh, <but> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Yeah. So since you're mentioning the visualization, so it kind of goes back to my family had been living overseas. My um, parents uh, moved us to Japan for a year, then the Philippines for a year. Was your dad in the military? He was a school psychologist and um, was, a, as a civilian, working for the military. So working for the military schools. <clears throat> and it was just basically an awesome opportunity for our family to be able to travel. Sure. So after the, the two years abroad, we settled in Placerville, California. Yay! And uh, found a little home uh, one block from the high school, which happened to be in the neighborhood of Thomas Kincaid. The paper boy. <laughs> the paper boy. <laughs> yeah. And How um, old was he? He was 13. And you were? 12. Okay. Yes, just turned 12. And um, I had just moved into the neighborhood, made friends with the, the neighbor girl, and also had just purchased a brand new bikini. And <laughs> had told my girlfriend, I'm going to go put on my suit. Let's go up to the high school and, and go swimming. So I ran in, put on the suit, got a knock on the door. I'm assuming it was her. So I answered the door with a great big ta-da to show <laughs> off, you know, I my new, new acquisition. <laughs> and when it was Tom standing there, I screamed and, and held, you know, I hid behind the door. Basically, that clenched our relationship. From then on, we were best friends. I spent the rest of the summer, you know. In that bikini. In that bikini, <laughs> basically. But I, our family had a trampoline, so he would stop by every day. We'd jump on the oh, trampoline. That's great. I'd hop on his bike. We'd do the paper route. We were uh, just, you know, hard, you know, fast, hard, fast friends. Yes. And um, that uh, fall at school, I don't know if they do this anymore, but our our school held a Sadie Hawkins oh, dance. They still do it. Well, I, they did. I don't know. But I yeah. remember I had Sadie Hawkins dances. It's one of those ones where the girl asks the guy. Yes, and they usually wear the same and outfit. wear a matching yeah. shirt. So I got us, you know, matching denim, you know, button-up shirts and embroidered, you know, all around the collar oh. and the pockets <laughs> yeah. and all that. And at the Sadie Hawkins dance, I, I can't believe they did this because I was 12. He was 13. You could get married. And... We were super excited to do this, get married, you know, this sure. is like super thrilling. Get in line and start watching the people in front of us and realize once he pronounced you man and wife, yeah. he said, you may kiss the bride. Well, I never kissed anybody. I was getting like, and oh hopefully he had neither. Well, I think he had. <laughs> so he puts his arm around uh -huh. me and says, you want to practice? Oh. So that was our first kiss. Oh, my goodness. And... Um, how we old were you when get you, married. you got married? Yeah. At what age? So that was 12. Yes. Yes. So then, for real, tw I was 22. 22. Uh, had you gone to college together? No. Uh, he went to Berkeley for two years and then on to Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. 
and I went to Chico, got my degree in nursing, or yeah. Yes. In, uh, and then did you immediately move here? No, we lived in LA for a couple of years. He was just finishing the movie and- What uh, movie? He and James Gurney, another artist friend, did all of the backgrounds for a movie, an animated film, and uh, they did all the backgrounds oh. for Fire and Ice. It was a Ralph Bakshi production. Oh, wow. Little known, yeah. but that was really a training ground for them, and this has never been done before, that two artists would do the backgrounds in their entirety. It's usually a, you know, a team mm -hmm. of, you know, a whole staff of artists. And between the two of them, over the course of a year, they painted all the backgrounds. And who came up with the, the trademark painter of light? Who came up with that? Well, this was, um, so we lived in LA for two years and then moved back to Placerville, bought a uh, home actually that my parents had built, which was, they had designed, it was a passive solar um, completely. They were ahead know, of their time. Way ahead of their yeah. time. And on the property was a um, hundred year old barn, which Thomas converted to be his studio. It was on 10 acres overlooking a beautiful valley. It was just a gorgeous setup. Um, we were able to move back and... Um, no kids yet? No kids. And um, no kids for six years. We married young and we really both um, were committed to, you know, focusing on career and... And, uh, and were you we an active nurse work. at the time? I was an active nurse for a short time mm -hmm. because um, I think we got sidetracked. I think we were, how did we come up with a that name? Too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Happens so, a lot. <laughs> because it ties into, there was, he actually came up with the um, logo of a light post. And literally I remember him running up from the studio with the sketch in his hand and saying, I've got the name for the company light post publishing so that that was the the name yeah and then derived from that the painter of light and uh and what was his well we, we didn't get back to you you, you quit nursing after what yes. <laughs> so well, i quit nursing when i, I was always his assistant his right hand always person. helping right yes. hand doing what i could to yes give him more time and assist in any way i could when we once we started publishing the business just took off, and you know, I I basically had no yes, more, had no time more time for, yes. for nursing. What was his love and fascination about with cottages? Because uh, you never lived in a. It doesn't sound like you ever lived in a cottage, well, or did we you? Did actually. So how this passion began? Um, after th let's see, I guess it was five. Was it five years into our marriage? we took our first trip to Europe. And we um, actually were able to barter the use of one of our collector's oh. motorhome. So for a painting, we got the use of his motorhome for five weeks. Oh. And uh, we picked up the motorhome in Milano, Italy, and began our journey through Europe. And it was the first time for either of us. and both of us were spellbound. We just fell in love with the European landscape, the culture, you know, the food, everything. And we wound our way through you know, France and then took the hovercraft over to England. And just again, uh, fell in love with the, the landscape. Mm -hmm. And especially when we went into the Cotswolds, the architecture, the, the I mean, it, we felt like we stepped into a fairy tale. It was just perfect, and and uh, the the Cotswolds, if you if you've not been there, they've been super diligent to preserve them historically. There's no signage uh -huh. or mailboxes or quick marts or <laughs> they they've preserved it really well. And. And, there and came the so he painted yes. on location. Yes. And um, when we returned, we had opened a gallery in Carmel. Know it well. 
And no, it will. Well, actually, this one, I'm... Oh, it's it not the, the one? one. Okay. It's not the one that is currently open, which All is right. Darling. That's the I, one I, I do it. know. Yes. yes. This one was called The Cottage Gallery. Oh. And the cottage images just sold like crazy. People were yes. eating them up. And this was our income at that point. We were selling the originals um, mm -hmm. as his to make a living. So, you know, a sale equaled, you know. We can uh, eat tonight. Yeah, we can eat tonight. <laughs> so you, you, we sold a cottage, we yes. painted another That's cottage, right. you know, let's get well, another cottage on the wall. And they were just extremely popular. And you said that when he passed away, he had 2,000 original paintings. How quickly did he paint those paintings? <laughs> I mean, I guess it yes. became where he could do it with his eyes closed. Well, the 2000 is because we have images from his childhood, which of course he wasn't selling at that time, right. and from his college years and the early years, pre-publication. Then there was a phase that we were selling the originals. Then once we were started publishing and felt like we didn't need the income from the sale of the originals, we started keeping them. And so it's really the originals from about 1997 on and pre-publication and um, between the two there's about 2,000. Do you still have the Morgan Hill facility or is that closed? It, it's not the same facility not the original facility that we built as yes. a company but we are we do still have our um, headquarters located in Morgan Hill. And what are those people doing? What do those folks do at the headquarters? So we people are, are still, still buying pictures, paintings. Yes. So we are still selling the the images, whichever ones weren't sold out. Those right. are still available. And then we are replicating Thomas's work through our studio. So we have a, a staff of artists that are painting in the. Oh. Um, genre of yes. Thomas King. Yes. And th yes. they're basing the work on sketches. He had many, 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 many sketches ahead of ideas of pieces oh. that, you that, know, he would. That can be finished that now. Would, or, yeah, would be um, yes. projects in the future uh, that he had researched and idealized and, and put down in sketch. And uh, so we are continuing to publish. And you're still in your Monasterino home, the compound, so, the compound with the studio absolutely. in the back. Is anybody living in that studio? Well, guarding, actually, guarding my, the my, paintings. My daughter and her husband are yeah, living there, which that's is nice. wonderful. I love within walking distance family for close. a cup of coffee. At, yes. Yes. Yeah. So you and your four daughters sound, you sound like you're so very close. We are really close. I mean, my it's two fabulous. daughters and I are inseparable yeah. even though we don't live together yes. but and I feel like yeah. you have that same relationship we really do and that's been another one of the blessings of forming the foundation is we can work together are and, all four girls working um the f three oldest are yes the youngest recently graduated from Santa Clara University and hasn't been drawn in yet we'll see maybe we're, we'll work on her but, uh, so she's still um, deciding, you know, what I think she wants to, she um, got her degree in environmental science and I think wants to practice in that area for a while and we'll see. So do you see your girls all the time? All the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yes. And might we see you around town? Where do you like to go for lunch? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I will be often seen at St. Joe's. Yes. Like a group of my girlfriends and I meet 8.30 you know, Tuesdays, Thursdays, you'll see us out on the trail. Uh, so that's a regular thing. I also love to bike. So I am often on my bike, uh, you know, headed out towards Kennedy or Hicks or out to Uvis or out, uh, you know, maybe the other direction towards uh, the uh, Mount Eden or something. So, yeah. So you're busy. So on my bike or yeah, yeah. in my tennies. You'll be in Montecerino forever? That's, I hope so. Yeah. I love it. It's just... I, I can't, you know, I've been fortunate to be able to travel all over the world, and there's so many beautiful places in the world, but this is definitely at the top. I have to I, and agree. I, I feel like um, we are so fortunate. Uh, I, I still get a thrill just, you know, wandering through my neighborhood 
or going to the east side of the and the amount of personal pride that people and the you know creativity they put in love and creativity they put into their homes um it's it's such a it's such a pleasure do you have a favorite thomas kincaid painting yeah <laughs> yeah is it is it in your home yes what room is it in okay that is hilarious <laughs> because it's in my bathroom okay <laughs> because it's very personal yes. to me what, what is it and of? it's very special can you share what it is of yes it is a painting that thomas painted of the two of us walking by moonlight oh this was a painting that he painted when we were both still in college and we weren't dating but we were friends and uh when he would come we would both be home during the summer we uh one evening went out for a, a stroll by moonlight and we were just oh. holding hands walking through a field um after he dropped me off that evening I didn't know this, but he went to his studio and painted this painting of the two of us walking by moonlight. In that one night, in one evening? Yes. Oh. It's a impressionist an impressionist piece. Okay. Um, oh. And we, our song was... Um, okay, do I need to get a tissue out now? Yes, you might. <laughs> I just have to use my sleeve because I have nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so our song was it, Moon Shadow, oh. Cat Stevens. Yes. And... Um, so he did not ever tell me that he painted that painting until our first wedding anniversary. He gave it to me as a gift. Oh. And uh, it's just oh. precious. What a wonderful story. It's very impressionistic, but in just a few brush strokes, he captured he and I, just the way we're standing, the, the way our bodies are tilted, the he's looking more down I'm looking more forward it's just this it's just perfect it's just magical that's wonderful so that that one I I keep very special I don't and, blame uh, you I see I it every day you. I don't blame you <laughs> yeah. it's not above I the toilet there was a, it's not above the toilet is it I won't say okay um, <laughs> If there was a fire, I, I've said that's that a grab grab that piece. I don't and, blame yeah. you. Well, I want to thank you and your daughters for what you're doing with Kincaid Family Foundation. We didn't even get to touch what you've been doing in Peru mm -hmm. for young at-risk families who need help. I mean, it's just amazing. Can I have you come back sometime? I'd love and to. And can we go get a glass of wine as well? <laughs> <laughs> well go to the Purple Onion. <laughs> I, I, I'm with, there with you. Oh, thank you so much, <laughs> Nanette Kincaid. What a pleasure. One of my favorite interviews. So you have somebody like Nanette in your life and you'd like to nominate him or her or yourself and I'll sit down with you. And if we need Kleenex, just tell me ahead of time. But it's just always wonderful being with you here. You can do your nominating at kcat.org. And again, thank you so much for being with us. I'm Lisa Chrysler. You're watching Community Storytelling on KCAT TV 15.